Barbie is a 2023 American fantasy comedy film directed by Greta Gerwig from the screenplay she wrote with Noah Baumbach. Based on the eponymous fashion dolls by Mantel, it is the first live-action Barbie film after numerous computer-animated films and specials. The film stars Margot Robbie as the titular character and Ryan Gosling as Ken, and follows the pair on a journey of self-discovery following an existential crisis. It features a supporting cast that includes America Ferreira, Kate McKinnon, Issa Rae, Rio Perlman and Will Farrell. A live-action Barbie film was announced in September of 2009 by Universal Pictures, with Lawrence Mark producing. Development began in April 2014 when Sony Pictures acquired the film rights. Following multiple writer and director changes in the casting of Amy Schumer and later Anne Hathaway as Barbie, the rights were transferred to Warner Brothers Pictures in October 2018. Margot Robbie would enter early talks for the role, with Patty Jenkins briefly being considered for the director position. Yanong Kreitz, Mantle CEO, was determined to cast Robbie as the titular character after meeting with her following his hiring as CEO in both he and the film's producer Robbie Brenner felt that Robbie's appearance resembled that of a conventional Barbie doll and were impressed by her ideas. Initial meetings occurred at the Polar Lounge located in Beverly Hills Hotel. Brenner eventually partnered with Robbie's production company Lucky Chap Entertainment with Robbie's husband Tom Ackley and Josie McNamara also being enlisted as producers. Robbie's casting was confirmed in July of 2019. In her capacity as producer, Robbie pitched Barbie to Warner Brothers herself. During the greenlit meeting, she compared the film to Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park in 1993 and also jokingly suggested it would gross over $1 billion. Later on, she approached Greta Gerwig, whose previous films, particularly Little Woman in 2019, Robbie enjoyed, to be screenwriter. Gerwig was in post-production for another film and accepted the assignment on condition that her partner, Noah Baumbach, also wrote the script. Gerwig would sign on to direct the film in July 2021. Robbie said that the film aimed at subverting expectations and giving audiences the thing you didn't know you wanted. In August of 2023, it was announced that Robbie would earn roughly $50 million in salary and box office bonuses as the star and producer of the film. Principal photography occurred primarily at Warner Brothers Studios in Livingston in England and at Venice Beach Skate Park in Los Angeles from March to July of 2022. Gerwig and Baumbach were given full creative freedom in writing the film. They collaborated on screenplay during the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns of 2020 and 2021 and described the writing process as free and open. For the narrative arc, she was particularly inspired by the non-fiction book Reviving Ophelia by Mary Pfeiffer, which accounts the effects of societal pressures on American teenage girls. The script also contains candid criticism of Mattel, which created skepticism among Mattel's officials when they received the first version. However, Kretz decided to trust Gerwig. Renner noted that being safe in the world doesn't work, and she interpreted Barbie to be bold and a trailblazer. As a result, Will Ferrell's portrayal as the Mantle CEO was meant to be an allegory of corporate America. Gerwig also was influenced by her own childhood experiences with Barbie. Her mother would discourage her from purchasing such dolls, but eventually allowed her to. Opting to acknowledge the controversial nature of the Barbie doll, Gerwig chose to create a film that celebrated feminism behind Barbie, while also noting the controversial beauty standards associated with it. She was also fascinated by the idea that humans create dolls, and which in turn imitate humans, feeling that they were in constant conversation with inanimate objects, while also conveying an affirmative message to the audience to just be yourself, I know that's enough. The film deliberately juxtaposed contradictory messaging such as critiquing consumerism yet glamorizing plastic products and ending the film in which Barbie desires to be more than just a plastic doll. The film also explores negative consequences of the hierarchical power structures with Gerwig saying that she extrapolated that Barbie rules and Ken's are underclass and it felt it was similar to the Planet of the Apes. Ken has low self-esteem and seeks approval from Barbie which Gerwig identified as a good source for the story. Gosling compared Gerwig's version to Milton Glaser's I Love New York logo as he felt Gerwig created the film's characters as a way of understanding the contemporary world. Ken also has the only power ballad in the film, and Gerwig had identified it as a moment in which she felt the film transcended what a Barbie movie traditionally should have been. Most notably, the film was released on the same day as Oppenheimer, a biographical film about the life of J. Robert Oppenheimer, written and directed by Christopher Nolan. Due to the tonal and genre contrast between the two films, many social media users created memes and ironic posts about how the two films to appeal to different audiences and how they should be viewed as a double feature. The trend was known as Barbenheimer. The film though, however, has been met with a lot of controversy. There was controversy over the alleged appearance of the Nine Dash Line, a maritime border running through the South China Sea, set and claimed by the government of the People's Republic of China. In the film began with Vietnam's film censorship authority banded for the film's alleged displaying such lines. In contrast, the Philippine counterpart instead requested that the lines in question be blurred. Both countries have banned the films Adominal and Uncharted for featuring the actual Nine Dash Line. 
The Nine Dash Line is controversial due to its maritime border disputes between China, Vietnam, Taiwan, Malaysia, Brunei and the Philippines. In some Muslim-majority countries, there were attempts to ban the film on moral grounds for allegedly showing LGBTQ plus themes, and some of these countries were successful in banning the movie. Some fun trivia notes. When Barbie and Ken are first in the car going to the real world, the dominant on the dashboard reads 031959, a reference to the first Barbie doll launching in March 1959. Barbie is 23% larger than everything in Barbie land to mimic the awkward, disproportionate scale that real Barbies and Barbie activity sets are produced in. This is why Barbie sometimes appears too large for things like her car, or why ceilings seem to be too low in the dream house. According to Ryan Gosling, he accepted the role of Ken after seeing his daughter's Ken doll lying face down in the mud next to a squished lemon. He then took a shot of the doll on the lemon and sent it to Greta Gerwig, saying, I shall be your Ken. His story must be told. The older woman on the bench is played by Oscar-winning costume designer Anne Roth, whose long and prolific career first started in the mid-1960s. Upon the Barbie movie's release, she was 91 years old. The reoccurring song Barbie sings is called Closer to Fine by the Indigo Girls. The song is about not beating up yourself too hard, or to get your answer from one place. It's about being confused, but looking for the answers, and in the end knowing that you're going to be fine. Whereas the recurring song for Ken is a song called Push by Matchbox 20. It's writer Rob Thomas saying, It is not about physical violence, it's about emotions and how somebody can push you around without even lifting a finger. In that song, it's the guy who gets pushed around by the girl he's having a relationship with. Barbie premiered at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles on July 9th, 2023 and was released in the United States on July 21st by Warner Brothers Pictures. The film received critical acclaim and has grossed over $1.4 billion, becoming the highest grossing film of 2023 as well as the highest grossing film by a solo female director and the highest grossing film ever released by Warner Brothers and now so far the 14th highest grossing film of all time. Now this is one of those films I was really excited to see. Now, of course, when it came to the whole Bob and Hyber effect and the huge marketing campaign behind those two films, I had to choose, of course, Oppenheimer firstly, as that was a film more inclined to my usual tastes. Now, look, usually a film about Barbie would not interest me in the slightest, but when I realized that the likes of Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, and, of course, the fantastic Greta Gerwig were all attached to this film, I knew that this would be a serious and thought-provoking film. These are all superbly talented people within Hollywood, and they weren't just going to make a plastic, family type of film. This was going to be introspective, deep, and challenging. And I'm happy to say I was proven right. This film is absolutely fascinating. Because at the outset, how would you actually make a movie about Barbie seem serious, and deep, and self-reflective? Barbie at the end of the day is fundamentally just a toy, and a controversial one at that. Yes, of course there's the aspect of female empowerment that comes with the toy, but in the same breath though, as she has also caused a lot of controversy throughout her lifespan. And the film touches upon this in so many different ways. The writing is absolutely superb, it's original and it's creative. Look at its core, it is fundamentally a marketing campaign here for Mattel. Marketing their once beloved product to the world. But at least the big bosses at Mattel were prepared to take a laugh at themselves as it were. And allow the creative juices to flow with Baumbach and Gobeck in terms of their writing of this excellent script. Robbie is absolutely superb here as the lead actress in this film, and I couldn't imagine anybody else playing Barbie as well as she does. She plays the role with a sense of nuance, believability. From one stage you believe that she's actually a plastic toy, to the next that she's finding out her own humanity within herself. It's a layered and nuanced portrayal, and she really does light up the screen every time she's on it. As does, of course, Ryan Gosling here, as the more fun and lovable Ken. He's the more comedic sideshow of the piece, and he really does bring out some fantastic laughs, although also bringing a deeper aspect to the role. I have, however, one or two criticisms. I felt that there wasn't enough of a contrast between the real world and Barbie land. You needed to create that sort of strong juxtaposition between the harsh realities of the world that we live in, and of course the fake plastic world of Barbie land. I found the most real character to be Ariadne Greenblatt, who plays Sasha, Gloria's daughter. Gloria, played by American Ferreira, just doesn't come across very much like a real-world person. Neither does Will Ferrell, here as the CEO of Mantel, although, of course, I absolutely loved his comedic presence. Now, as a man viewing this film, look, in some ways, it does come across as a bit of a dig at men, as it were, and it can be a little bit sexist at times, as the men are really portrayed here as dumb, idiotic, and unable to cope without the woman. Look, on a whole, I don't really find this too offensive. But in some ways, reverse sexism is really not the point here. What we're trying to crave here is equality. Look, at the end of the day, this is a movie about women. And fundamentally, it's made for women. So like I said, I wasn't overly offended. But I did feel sometimes the male characters were really just non-existent. And all in all, while I praise the film's strong feminist angle, it should be more based on equality rather than 
bringing down the other six. Look, in saying that though, this is a superb film. I love the colours, the originality, the great soundtrack and the fantastic cast as well. This film really surprised me. I really wouldn't have expected much going into this film, but I really found it entertaining and most enjoyable. This film in many ways has been a cultural phenomena. It's blown away the box office and outdone all expectations. What I hope though doesn't happen, but probably will, is that Hollywood will now want to cash in, try and turn every toy in the world into a movie like this one. And of course, don't worry, there will be a Barbie 2 one day, but I just feel it will lack the originality and the beautifully eccentric imaginative example of what this film really is. Barbie gets an 8.5 out of 10.